Gandang hapon, Pilipinas. Diyos marhain hapon, Kamarina Sur. Welcome sa panglabing tatlong serye ng ating pagsasanay dito sa ating kaugnay School on the Air on Production of High Quality Inbred Rice and Seeds and Farm Mechanization. Hatid po sa inyo ng Agricultural Training Institute. Magandang magandang hapon sa ating mga farmer enrollees mula sa 36 na municipalities at dalawang syudad ng Camarines Sur. Tayo po ay napapanood via YouTube Live sa ATI Bigol Hashtag Sarabay Channel at napapakinggan sa Intila ng Radyo sa DWNX 91.1 FM Naga at DWNX 1611 AM Naga tuwing Martes at Webes alas 5.30 ng hapon hanggang alas 6.30. Sa muli, ito po si Techie ng ADI Beacon. Bago po tayo magpatuloy sa ating discussion ng ating topic for this afternoon, balikan po muna natin ng konti yung mga mahalaga pong rekomendasyon o assessment na nailahad noong last episode patungkol sa key check number 9. So, sa key check number 9, sinasabi po na ito yung pagsisinop ng ani. At meron din po tayo doon na naipakita or naidiscuss na mga post-harvest machines ng ating uh, resource person na si Engineer Danny Chris Orsio. So, sa assessment po, well po may dalawang mahalagang bagay na uh, nailahad po last episode. Una po, ito yung uh, napatuyo ng pantay ang palay sa loob ng uh, 12 to 24 hours pagkagiit. At pangalawa po, naimbak ng wasto ang nilinis na palay sa 12 to 14 degrees moisture content. So, yan po yung mga mahalagang assessment po na naibigay noong last episode. Ano po? At nag din po tayo ng Uh, question of the day para sa ating mga kaunay. So, ang tanong po ay, magbigay ng dalawang pagtataya o assessment sa key check number 9. So, ang sagot po dito ay yung nabanggit ko kanina. Una, napatuyo ng pantay ng palay sa loob ng 12 to 24 hours pagkagihi. At pangalawa, na yung bak ng wasto ang nilinis na palay sa 12 to 14 degrees moisture content. Ang nakakuha po ng sagot ay si Mr. Agrippino Notado ng San Fernando, Camarines Sur. Pakiano lang, contact na lang sir, si Ms. Richelle Bonisoro para po sa ating munting premyo. Ano po? At ngayong hapon naman ay para sa ating panglabing tatlong episode ay dadako naman po tayo sa pagtalakay ng mga policies and guidelines on seed certification. At makakasama po natin, uh, walang iba po kundi yung Chief ng National Seed Quality Control Services na, Ms. na si Ms. Marites R. Reyes. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating mga tagapakinig. This afternoon, my topic is about the mechanics, policies, and guidelines on seed certification. So, since nasa... Bureau of Plant Industry po ang aming opisina. Nagsisimula po ang lahat ng ating mga sa pagtatanim ay sa seed. And dito po, nakadefine po ang seed sa IRR of RA 7308 Seed Industry Development Act of 1992, Article 5, Section 1. Seed shall mean a plant material used for the production of food, forage, fibers, industrial crops, oil, flowers, grasses, herbs, and aquatic plants, but not limited to meristem and clonal propagation, such as tubers, forms, cuttings, seedlings, and micro-propagated plantlets. So, seed is the starting point and it is the determinant of the future plant development. It is also the master key to success with cultivation and it is the foundation of any crop. Seed quality 
is described as the potential performance of a seedlot. Yung seeds po natin dapat true to variety with high physical purity, high germination percentage, high vigor, and moisture content is suitable for storage. Since seeds will be stored at low moisture content or low relative humidity, Diyan po maritain ang viability for longer period of time ng ating pong seeds na i-store natin sa ating mga bodega. And uh, when we say viability of seed, it is the measure of how many seeds are alive or ability to survive. And quality control means the systematic approach towards achieving and or maintaining the desired quality standard of seed through test and certification. Yan na po yung ginagawa namin sa laboratory, yung pagtitest ng mga buto na galing po sa ating mga accredited seed growers. And yun din po mga binibili ng DA na mga vegetable seeds and other uh, seeds po na pinoprocure ni dapat nila katulad po ng hybrid, yun po yung mga tinitest po namin sa laboratory. So, ito po yung importance ng good quality seed. High quality seeds, kung yan po ang gagamitin ng ating mga uh, farmers, lower seed rate po yung magagamit. It is economical. Number two, less or minimal po ang replanting. Vigorous ang seedling since na test po siya sa laboratory at may mga standards po tayong sinusunod. And faster ang growth rate. Uniform crop stand. Merong is in harvesting and ang yield po niyan ay uh, mag increase ng 5 to 20%. The factors affecting seed quality, number one po ay yung variety, genetic ng seed. Siyempre, kasama po dyan yung climatic condition and crop husbandry from the time of sowing, management, siyempre yung nutritional, water, and yung sa pest control po. And next is the time of harvesting, yung procedure po nila and threshing and also post-harvest management yung drying, packing, and transportation. So, our mandate is nakapaloob po sa Republic Act 7308. Ito po yung Seed Industry Development Act of 1992. We're in the Bureau of Plant Industry through the National Seed Quality Control Services as mandated by the Seed Industry Development Act of 1992 or otherwise known as the Republic Act 7308 supports the major trust of the Department of Agriculture through the provision of quality assurance and control services for seed distribution, seed research, and seed training in seed quality control towards sustainable agriculture and environment protection. Yan po ang aming mandato, yung mag-provide po kami ng dekalidad na binhi para maipamahagi po natin ito sa ating mga magsasaka. So, ang seed certification is a system of seed production geared towards maintaining genetic identity, varietal purity, and standards of quality seeds of superior crop varieties. So, ano po yung, ba yung purpose ng seed certification? The purpose is to maintain the genetic identity and purity and make available to farmers high quality seeds of superior varieties. In the Philippines, the Bureau of Plant Industry through the National Seed Quality Control Services is the seed certifying agency in the country 
which implements quality control procedures in certification both for seed stock production of government seed farms, institutions, and private seed growers. Yung mga seed inspectors naman po, sila yung principal contact between the certifying agency and the seed growers. And ang kanila pong duty is to perform field inspection, meron po yung preliminary field inspection and final inspection, and conduct seed sampling and seed tagging. May mga special order din po na nakapaloob dito sa, sa ating pong uh, mechanics and policies dito sa dinidiscuss natin ngayon na yung deputation of personnel as seed inspector. Ito po yung special order number 489 series of 2018 kung saan meron po tayong 1,052 seed inspectors throughout the country. Uh, naka cluster po sila. Cluster 1 we have Sa cluster 1, we have 461 seed inspectors. And sa cluster 2, 179. Cluster 3, 146. And cluster 4, 266. And a total of 1,052 seed inspectors throughout the Philippines. And the uh, seed testing laboratories... Sila po yung responsible for seed testing and issuance of results of laboratory analysis and tags. Throughout the country, we have 25 seed testing laboratories. One from the central office, 8 satellite laboratories, and 16 regional offices, 16 regional laboratories. So, 25 po lahat yung mga uh, National Seed Quality Control Services offices in the in the country. So, ang process po ng certification is, uh, is is from the accreditation of seed growers Next is the preliminary field inspection and next to this is the final final field inspection, seed sampling, receiving of seed samples, seed testing of seed samples and issuance of results of analysis. So we go to the policies and guidelines on seed certification for inbred dry seed production. Ito po yung Department Circular 09 Series of 2018 wherein it is the revised guidelines for the accreditation of inbred rice seed growers, producers. In case po yung ating mga farmers gusto po silang maging accredited seed growers, uh, dito po sa Department Circular 09, nakapaloob yung mga requirements. So, iyan po ang i- the discuss po natin ngayon. So, section 1 of this department circular 09 is the coverage. This circular shall govern the accreditation or of an individual or a group of inbred rice seed growers or producers. The individual shall be a farmer, seed grower, producer, or member of association cooperative while the group institution shall be an association cooperative corporation government institution non-government organization or international organization organization so yan po yung coverage niya pwedeng individual farmer ang magpapa-accredit or group yung co-op nila or association so ang mga documentary requirements po ay 
For individual seed grower ay ito. Duly accomplished form for application for accreditation as seed grower or producer. Ito po yung revised BPI and SQCS form number 5 kung saan po pwede po itong uh, ibig, uh, makuha sa amin pong office. And dapat accomplish, ma-accomplish po yun ng ating ano, seed grower na mag-apply with latest colored 2x2 ID picture, picture dapat yung latest po, 6 months na picture niya so next dapat mag-submit din siya as a requirement yung proof of ownership use of rock over the production area by submitting any of the following Number one, proof of land ownership. Kung siya po yung nagsasaka, pwede niyang isubmit sa amin yung photocopy ng kanyang land title. So, letter B, kung ito naman ay nakasanla sa kanya, pwede niyang i-present po yung lease contract valid for a minimum of three years. Or, any notarized documents showing authority over the use of prop property for seed production for a minimum of three years. So, yun po yung uh, is mga dapat niyang isabit na requirements. And number four, dapat po nakapag-attend siya ng basic training on inbred rice seed production and certification. Five days po yung basic training na yan. And dapat ma-i-preset niya po din yung kanyang training certificate. Uh, the training should be conducted and issued by government agencies involved in the implementation of inbred rice seed production and certification programs such as ATI, B BPI, Bureau of Plant Industry, DA, RFOs, Research Station, Centers, Phil Rice, IRI, or the Institute of Crop Science University of the Philippines, Los Baños. The training for accreditation must be coordinated with the BPI as the accreditation authority. And number five, accredited hybrid rice seed growers producers who have already undergone intensive training on seed production and intend to engage on inbred rice seed production must undergo retooling on inbred rice seed production and certification for three days at their own expense as a training requirement for accreditation as inbred rice seed grower or producers. So, for group and institutions such as seed growers, producers, association, cooperative, corporation, government institution, non-government organization, and international organization. Parehas din po nung sa individual seed grower, dapat ma-accomplish nila yung application for accreditation as seed grower, producer, and they should present also as a requirement the certificate of registration from CDA, SET, DOLE, or DTI, whichever is applicable. And number three, special power of attorney, special order, memorandum order, board resolution, or other legal instrument authorizing the representative to transact business in behalf of the group or institution. Number four requirement is the latest six months colored two by two ID picture of the authorized representative. And number five, same as dun po sa ating requirement sa individual seed grower, uh, they should also present as requirement the proof of ownership over 
over the production area by submitting any of the following. Uh, letter A, proof of land ownership, transfer certificate of title, original certificate of title. Letter B, lease contract valid for a minimum of three years. And letter C, any notarized document showing authority over the use of the property for seed production for a minimum of three years. So, a training certificate also is a requirement which is issued to the authorized representative by government agencies such as ATI, BPI, DARFOs, research stations, centers, FILRISE, IRI, or the ICRAP, UPL, LB involved in the implementation of inbred dry seed production and certification for the five days basic training on inbred dry seed production and certification. The training for accreditation must be coordinated with the BPI as the accreditation authority. And in case the authorized representative is replaced, the concerned seed grower producer must formally inform in writing the BPI and SQCS within 10 working days. And the replacement shall undergo the basic training on inbred dry seed production and certification within six months upon notification of the replacement. And for association co-op, list of BPI accredited members stating the name accreditation number, residential address, production area, and location. And only members of the association co-op who are BPI accredited seed growers, producers, are qualified to produce seeds. For this co-op or association, yung po kasing mga members nila dapat nakapag-training na din and they are already accredited seed growers kasi kailangan po doon ilagay sa listing nila yung kanilang accreditation number. So, in section 3, the production area is 1 hectare. Yan po yung minimum area for accreditation na ia-apply nila. And any expansion in area should meet the requirements under Section 3.3 .3 of this circular within the accreditation period and shall be validated by the deputized seed inspector recommended by the chief of the regional satellite NSQCS and approved by the chief of NSQCS central office. So, bago po ma-accredit yung seed growers, dapat ma-validate po yung area nila ng deputized seed inspector sa kanila pong area and it is also concurred by the uh, National Seed Quality Control Services. And also for association cooperative, the production area shall include the area of the individually accredited members and or the association cooperative managed area. So, the production area should be fully irrigated with supplementary source of irrigation, good drainage system, and with fertile soil. So, yan po ang ating requirements sa kanilang production area. Dapat may ano, fully irrigated siya and may good drainage system and syempre yung soil dapat fertile. And the applicant must own or have access to post-harvest equipment and facilities such as thresher, dryer, blower, seed bagger, closer, storage, and others. Yan po yung importante kung mag engage po yung ating mga seed growers sa seed production. Dapat may, may bodega po sila kung saan i-store po nila yung kanilang mga seeds in Kung hindi man nila pag-aari yung kanilang mga equipment and facilities, at least may access po sila doon sa mga post-harvest equipment na yan and facilities. 
So, uh, as an accredited seed grower producer, the requirements must be complied with not later than 20 days after transplanting. Doon po sa area ng seed grower, dapat mag-put up po sila ng signboard made up of tarpaulin or plywood or pwede naman plain GI sheet prominently displayed in every seed production area with the following specification and information. Ang size po nung signboard na ilalagay dun sa area ng seed production is 1.2 meters ang length niya, 0.9 meters wide and height from the ground is 2 meters. We're in the information na nakalagay po doon is naka, dapat nakalagay in bread rice seed production and nakastate po doon yung name ng seed, seed grower, location ng farm, variety kung ano yung nakatanim niya doon sa, sa kanyang seed production area and area planted, date planted and name ng seed inspector. And the signboard shall be displayed up to harvesting in all seed production areas. And for compact seed production area naman with multiple varieties, kasi meron po tayong mga seed growers na napakalaki ng mga areas nila, pwede naman po silang maglagay lang ng isang mother billboard. And dun po sa mga katabing area naman, may maliit lang na signboard na nakalagay na lang po yung variety, kung ano yung itinanim nilang variety ng, ng inbred seed at saka date planted and area planted. Ang placard for each variety is made up of tarpaulin, plywood, or plain GI sheet. Yan po yung requirement and it will be displayed for a specific area where they are planted with the following specification. Yung size po nung maliit na lang na placard is 33 centimeters by 22 centimeters and yung height from the ground is 2 meters pa din po. So, section 4 for the procedure for accreditation. The applicant submits the documentary requirements under Section 2 herein to the concerned BPI and SQCS office for evaluation. Pero, yun po kanilang application, pwede po nilang isubmit muna yun dun sa naka-assign sa kanilang deputized seed inspector para alam naman po nung seed inspector yung, yung kanyang area and then kasi i-validate din niya ng seed inspector na naka-assign sa seed grower and only application with complete documentary requirements shall be processed in bread rice seed growers or producers who will engage in seed production in different regions they shall apply separately to the concerned region and undergo the procedure of accreditation in accordance with this circular so the concerned BPI and SQCS personnel or deputized seed inspector conducts an area validation or ocular inspection and submits report to the concerned BPI and SQCS office. And after validation, the chief of the concerned BPI and SQCS office acts on the application. Application that complies with the requirements and under this circular shall be con concurred and endorsed to the regional executive director through the regional seed coordinator. Otherwise, the application that failed to meet the requirement shall be returned to the applicant. And upon the receipt of the endorsement of the chief of the concerned BPI and SQCS office, the regional executive director through the regional seed coordinator acts on the application and the application that complies with the requirements un under this circular shall be concurred and endorsed to the BPI through the NSQCS. 
Otherwise, the application that failed to meet the requirements shall be returned to the concerned BPI and SQCS office. And the accreditation certificate shall be issued by the BPI through the NSQCS. Ito pong accreditation certificate nila ay galing po ito sa central office sa Manila and then ipinapadala na lang po sa amin dito sa regions. And the decisions of the application shall be acted within one month from the receipt of application to approval. And meron po tayong 500 pesos na nababayaran po yung seed grower na, na nag-a-apply upon filing of application for accreditation or renewal, yung new at saka renewal, parehas lang po. Uh, 500 pesos yung babayaran nila, nila and the applicant shall pay a uh, non-refundable accreditation fee. Yan po, 500 pesos. And the certificate of accreditation shall be issued by the director of the Bureau of Plant Industry upon compliance with this circular. The original copy is given to the applicant and photocopy concerned regional executive director and the third copy is for the regional or satellite national seed quality control services and this certificate of accreditation shall be valid for three years from date of approval Diyan po nakalagay sa Certificate of Accreditation kung new ang seed grower sa baba po niyan, meron ding nakalagay na date ng kanilang Certificate of Accreditation and kung kailan po mag-expire yung kanilang accreditation. And sa likod naman ng kanilang Certificate of accreditation my terms and conditions na nakalagay doon wherein dapat i-inform nila ang NSQCS if there is any change of address during the accreditation period and number two they should allow the deputized seed inspector to conduct inspection of seed field with signboard including equipment and facilities Draw sufficient representative samples from the properly cleaned seed lot for laboratory analysis and conduct bagging. Uh, the seed grower also should follow technical instruction from the deputy seed inspector in the production of seeds, particularly roguing, application of fertilizer, control of pests and diseases, and maintenance of Bodega. And number four, the seed growers sh should not move their seeds from the bodega without informing the deputy seed inspector before tagging. And they should pay the required fees for accreditation, field inspection, laboratory, and cost of tags to the NSQCS concerned and they should apply for renewal provided he or he he or she meets the eligibility requirements and the seed growers accreditation should be revoked or cancelled on the following grounds a letter a misdeclaration misinterpretation false statements dishonesty and fraud in the application for accreditation, renewal of accreditation, or in seed certification documents. And letter B, tolerated use by other non-accredited seed grower or misuse abuse of the seed grower's accreditation. And this certificate of accreditation remains valid only if the certified organization passed the audit and has no violation to the provision 
set by the National Seed Quality Control Services. And ito pong certificate of accreditation na to, pinapareceive namin sa sa seed growers. And yung copy po nila, yung yung first copy, yung original sa seed grower po yun. And the accreditation, yung certificate po nila, hindi po pwedeng magamit ng iba. And the accreditation is non-transferable. However, in case of death of the accredited individual, only his or her seed samples that had been already submitted to, lab to the laboratory for analysis before his death is eligible for certification and the results of analysis and certification tags for the seed lot under process in the laboratory shall be issued under the name of the deceased seed grower producer as represented by the next kin the next of kin subject to the submission of the required documents such as certified true copy of marriage contract if applicable death certificate birth certificate of the next of kin and affidavit of undertakings and in section 8 the renewal of accreditation the performance of accredited seed grower producer is evaluated before renewal of accreditation based on the following criteria yung submission po nila ng samples for at least three cropping seasons within the period of three years kaya dapat yung seed growers po uh, for three years, dapat nagtatanim din, na, nagtatanim sila ng seed, ng seeds and dapat may isinasubmit din po sa laboratory for three cropping seasons. And the number of samples passing the seed certification standards as against total number of seed number of samples submitted for analysis shall at least 75%. So, yan po yung evaluation para sa renewal ng accreditation ng ating seed grower. At least may 75% po silang makuha. And payments of all fees to BPA and SQCS before renewal of accreditation. And the applicant or the authorized representative must have completed the three days retooling course on inbred rice seed production and certification conducted by agencies stipulated in Section 2.1.4 and coordinated with the BPI at applicant's expense every three years before renewal of accreditation. Ito po yung mga nag-training na alimbawa yung bagong seed growers na nag pa-accredit. So, after 3 years dapat mag-attend na po sila ng retooling course on inbred rice seed production. And yan po ay at their own expense na yan. So, uh, Applications for renewal of accreditation must be filed 45 days before mag-expire po ang kanilang accreditation. And applicants who pass the performance evaluation may still file their applications within 6 months after the expiration of accreditation upon compliance with the requirements for renewal under this circular. However, applications filed beyond six months or fail to pass the performance evaluation shall be treated as new applications and the requirement for the five days basic trainings shall be complied with.
cancellation of accreditation. Ito na po yung nakalagay doon sa likod ng, ng certificate of accreditation ng ating mga seed growers wherein it is stated there that fraud, dishonesty, misdeclaration, misinterpretation, or false statements in the application for accreditation, renewal of accreditation, or in seed certification documents. So, yan po, makakancel ang kanilang accreditation. Yan. And tolerated use of certificate of accreditation by non-accredited seed grower, producer, or misuse, abuse of the seed grower's producer's accreditation. Kaya, bawal po ipagamit ang kanilang certificate of accreditation sa non-accredited na seed grower. And in Section 10, the implementation of the circulars shall be coordinated with the DA regional field offices through the regional seed coordinators, chiefs of the National Seed Quality Control Services, and the deputized seed inspectors. And the government institutions currently producing inbred dry seeds are given a maximum of six months from the date of approval of the circular to comply with the requirements of accreditation. So, yan po yung ating department circular wherein ito po yung ating pong guidelines sa pag-accredit ng ating pong mga seed growers. We have also administrative order number 16 series of 2010. The subject is the revised guidelines on inbred dry seed certification. Uh, we have 10 crops eligible for seed certification. Number one pujan is yung rice. And next is corn, sorghum, wheat, mung bean, soybean, peanut, tobacco, white potato, cotton, and we have the selected fruits and plantation crops. Uh, here in Bicol region, the crops we have for certification is rice and corn. Yun po yung karamihan sa pumapasok sa aming laboratory for certification. And we have also selected fruits and plantation crops. Ito po yung mga tin, uh, tinatag namin na mga pili trees for plant material certification. And we have the classes of seeds under seed certification. Uh, number one, we have the breeder, breeder seed, which comes directly from the plant breeder. And next is the foundation seed. It is grown from breeder seed. And next is the registered, registered seed. It is grown from foundation seed or breeder seed. And next is the certified seed. It is grown from breeder seed, foundation seed, or registered seeds. So, yan po ang four classes of seeds natin under seed certification. And for field standards, we have the maximum number of plants permitted in each class per 100 square meters. So, ang factors po natin dyan is yung other varieties and objectionable with whose seeds are inseparable. Makikita po ito sa, sa field, pag, during field inspection ng ating pong mga deputized seed inspector sa field na, na, na ating pong mga accredited seed growers. So, sa field standard, kung breeder and foundation seed yung itinanim po ng grower, dapat walang makikitang other varieties doon. 
and object and objectionable with sa field per 100 square meters dapat zero ang ang naka uh, walang other varieties or weeds doon sa sa field and for registered naman one lang po one ang number of plant per square meters and yung objectionable weed five ang dapat na makita lang doon and for certified seed uh, we have two sa standard two plants per 100 square meters and yung objectionable weed is 10 so yan po yung field standard so and we go to seed testing the sample submitted for certification shall be analyzed and tested within 72 hours upon receipt of the sample. Pag dinala na po yun ng deputized seed inspector sa laboratory, dapat matest po namin yun within 72 hours. And the result of analysis dapat ma-release siya within 15 working days of the testing or analysis of the sample. Um, International Seed Testing Association or ISTA, ito po yung International Association of Collaborating Seed Testing Stations and Seed Research Institution. It is an organization of governmental, private, and company laboratories to facilitate the international seed trade through reliable and reproducible results in seed quality evaluations. And it is, an ori it is oriented worldwide and decisively assisting to reduce non-tariff barriers of international trade. And it is a traditional, responsible, and effective role as a technical organization see, since more than 80 years. And it is the publish, publishing internationally recognized rules for seed testing. So, yung ginagamit po naming rules is according to ISTA. Yung mga ginagamit po naming rules sa pagtitest sa laboratory. And... We have also the seed standards. Ito po yung ginagamit naming standards sa laboratory for all the seed classes from breeder, foundation, registered, and certified seeds. Ang factors po natin is yung pure seed. Weed and other crop seed, inert matter, other varieties, germination, and moisture content. For for all this for breeder and foundation seed, yung pure seed po natin dapat is 99%. And for registered and certified seed, dapat 98% po ang ang standard po natin. And with and other crop for breeder and foundation. 0% and for registered and certified 0.04% and for the inert matter for breeder and foundation dapat po 1% and registered and certified seed 2% po ang ating standard and other varieties ang number of grains na Per 500 grams for breeder, dapat ang makuha po nung analyst dun sa tinitest na seed, ang standard po natin is, ang breeder is zero. Yan po yung number of grains per 500 grams. And for foundation, ang standard natin is 2 grains and registered 5 grains. For certified is 20 grains. And for the germination percentage, a minimum po natin is 85% for all the seed classes. 
mag-breeder man yan, foundation, registered, or certified seed, 85% po ang standard. Pag umabot na ng 85%, ibig sabihin, pasado na po yung seed. Pero pwedeng tumaas pa din dyan kasi may mga percentage din po yung na, na, nakukuha namin sa pagtitest na mumaabot din sa 99%. So, 85% lang po ang ating minimum sa ating seed standards. And for moisture content, dapat hindi tumaas sa 14% ang moisture content ng seed. Kaya ang standard po natin is 14%. Pwede mas maganda po pag mas mababa pa sa 14%. Ang makuhang uh, moisture content ng mga tinitest pong seeds. We have also this administrative order number three series series of 2010, wherein it is the general guidelines on retesting for germination of carryover seed lots of inbred and hybrid seeds. Ito po yung mga pumasa na for certification. But hindi pa na i-distribute or hindi pa na ipamimigay. So, kailangan pong i-retest para malaman po natin kung uh, okay pa ba ang germination ng mga seeds na to na naka, nakasta. Kasi yung iba po dyan is for buffer or seed reserve. So, number one, seed retesting must be applied on carryover seed lots of previous harvest that passed seed testing and certification standards. And number two, retesting of inbred and hybrid carryover seed lots must be done four months after the retest. So, af after four months na na-test po yan sa laboratory, kailangan ipatest po ulit para malaman po kung mataas pa ba ang termination or kung mababa na and continuous retest must be done monthly thereafter until the remaining seed stocks are disposed. Kasi kung meron pang mga nakastock, uh, after 3 months, dapat continuous na po yung pag -re retest And only the deputy seed inspectors or NSQCS personnel can draw and submit sample from seed lots for retesting. So, yun. Si seed inspector lang po, yung deputy seed inspector, or kung hindi available po yung seed inspector, yung sa NSQCS personnel po, pwede po mag-draw o kumuha ng sample sa nakastock na seeds. Hindi po pwede yung seed grower mismo ang magdodraw ng sample at magsasubmit sa amin sa laboratory. So, corresponding seed treatment before sampling must be done in case there is an insect pest infestation is observed among seed lots to be retested. And all bags of the seed lot of particular variety should be reprocessed bag and then sampled according to the prescribed sampling procedure of the NSQCS. And notice for reprocessing must be issued to the seed grower owner by the deputy seed inspector or NSQCS personnel. So, if in case naman there is no insect infestation, sample can be drawn from its seed lot for germination retest. And sampling is done in accordance to the Administrative Order 21 Series of 2007. And the carryover seed lots must retain the original lot number. May mga lot number po kasing nilalagay dyan ang ating mga deputized na seed growers. And yung pong original lot number na yun, i-retain lang. And kasi linalagay po yun dun sa information sa uh, sample label. And samples for retesting must be submitted immediately to the respective and SQCS and results for the retest must be provided to the seed grower within 15 days upon receipt of the sample. And 
meron din pong bayad sa pagpapa-retest and the result of analysis must be issued after payment. So, we have also the Administrative Order Number 50 Series, series of 2000 wherein it is the revising of the rate of fees charges for laboratory analysis, seed testing, and field inspection services and plant quarantine regulatory services by the Bureau of Plant Industry. For field inspection fees up to 4 hectares, uh, we have 135 pesos and for final, yan pong prelim inspection is 135 per hectare. And for final inspection, the fee is 65 pesos and an additional hectare but not more than 19 hectares. For prelim, 65 pesos and final is 35 pesos per hectare. And for the seed testing fees, complete test for sample intended for certification. Ang fee po is 130 pesos per sample and seed analysis for all crops for purity uh, purity analysis 18 pesos per sample germination small seeded 42 per sample big seeded 110 and for moisture content determination 50 pesos seed health for seedborne virus 110 and other seedborne diseases 42 pesos determination of other varieties and red rice 30 pesos tetrasolium test for small seeded 200 mas mahal yung sa small seeded kasi mas mahirap gawin yung test dyan and for big seeded 130 pesos Vigor test as listed in ISTA rules, 65 pesos per sample. And for the certification tag and certified true copy of report of analysis, 1 peso and 80 centavos. Yan po, for the tag and certified true copy of the report of analysis. So, we have also the Department Circular number 15, series of 2018, which is the amending the buying and selling of inbred rice seeds. Ito na po yung uh, presyo ng atin pong mga certified seeds. For breeder seed, 250 pesos ang price Po per kilo and foundation seed we have here 88 pesos and yung registered is 46 pesos and the certified seed is 38 pesos so yan po ang ating buying and selling price of inbred dry seed the DA shall Procure only seeds certified by the BPI and SQCS. Ito na po yung binibili ng DA na nakakarating po sa ating mga magsasaka. Uh, dapat yung binhi po ay certified ng Bureau of Plant Industry and SQCS in the region. And the germination test shall be conducted three months after the latest test to ensure the germination rate is at least 85% before selling, procurement, or distribution. However, for the procurement of seed reserve, the germination rate must at least 90%. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Tess. Ayan, natapos na naman ang isang oras nating pagbabahagi ng maalagang impormasyon patungkol sa agrikultura. Ngayon po ay dadako tayo sa ating question of the day. Ano po ang apat na quality tests na isinasagawa sa laboratory? Ulitin ko po, ano ang apat na quality tests na isinasagawa sa laboratory? 
Okay, maaari nyo pong muling balikan yung mga natalakay po natin mula episode 1 hanggang uh, ngayon sa ATI Bicol Hashtag Sarabay Channel. Kung may mga comments po or clarification, uh, pakilagay lang po sa ating comment box sa YouTube channel natin. At sa CP number 0917 para naman po sa ating mga tagapakinig sa radyo. Abangan niyo po ulit ang susunod nating episode. Yun po ay continuation po ng uh, talakayan natin about seed certification. Ito po yung uh, patungkol sa field inspection and standards, seed testing methods, procedures, and laboratory standards. At uh, meron din po tayong topic about expanded rice credit assistance under RCEF. Iyan po ay tatalakayin natin sa Martes sa ating susunod na episode. So pakatutukan lang po mga ating kaugnay. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pagsubaybay, pakikinig at panunood. Lagi pong tandaan na tayo mag-iingat. Stay safe, follow health protocols. Together we heal as one. Diyos pabalos sa Indogabos.